Michael Harrison here has an interesting challenge and well I warn you now this video might get a bit complicated so really it's only to solve this one problem and it's going to use quite a variety of different things to achieve it so let's see we've got we're looking to get something like this backdrop it's going to be in an aspect ratio 24 by 3 so that's really longer than you could get away with if you just did a panoramic projection so what we want is a kind of a tracking shot where you can have uh, more horizontal space than you could have in a 360 degree if i could say it like that i think that makes sense i don't know anyway we'll do it and solve the problem so the first thing is create a long set of terrains so i've got some terrains here in my object library uh, that Horo made. So I'm going to use these. I'm going to use the 1024 resolution versions just to speed things up. But obviously the higher resolution the better. So I'm just going to bring in five of these terrains. It should be enough to give an example of what I'm uh, aiming to do here. So I'll bring in these five terrains. Uh -huh. And then in the overhead view, I'll just uh, slide this ground plane back. In the Hovet view, what I'm going to do is select each one in turn and just distribute it out. But I'm going to leave them overlapping slightly so that they can sort of be blended together to create one long terrain that has some detail in it. So the next thing is that these terrains, as they stand, have got high edges. So I'll edit each terrain in the train lab. And for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to drop the edges of the train. So this is just a way of creating a set of terrains. Um, that, that are, are, are long and thin but uh, still retain their detail. You could create one long thin terrain and stretch it out but at that point you might get some uh, distortion in the ground features. So it's better really to stick with the square terrain when you've made it and just link it together by various means. We Also by using the same material on all these terrains it will help uh, with respect to getting getting them to look like one uniform thing. So. I've just rounded the edges on each of these so they're going to run into one another and so there won't be any steep inclines at the very start when we're looking along this edge. So I just I just overlap them. I can I can do it a bit randomly as well, it doesn't matter. And I'll select all of them and the ground plane and give them all a material that's the same. So let's uh, go in here and use one of the materials I've pre-made. And then we'll have a quick look at what we've got so far. That's fine and I'm going to just slide this lot forward and group it and enlarge it so I make it nice and big just so I have a sense of scale because I know this material was designed on a larger scale I'll, I'll now ungroup that and just zero everything so if I use the side view here you can see there's my mountain so they might seem rather distant at the moment and uh, obviously the atmosphere is not right so I'm going to choose HDRI background that uh, Horo created to give me some sophisticated lighting and uh, you can see that the material has been chose to, chosen to match up more or less with this backdrop. Right so what I need is to have these in a view in such a way that it's as if the camera was looking straight on at every section along the way so we've not got this uh, perspective situation so what I need is a very narrow long field of view well I can achieve that by creating a lens that uh, creates if you like an infinitely narrow field of view so I'll just do that I'll create an infinite plane and uh, just tilt it up on its edge so it's in front of the camera so this is going to be my lens there it is I'm going to modify the material and get rid of the diffusion, make it fully transparent and set the refraction to zero. So that's my lens now, so viewing through this you can see it looks quite radically different. Because of the nature of this lens I need a very wide field of view now to fit things in and I'm going to have to pull the camera back quite a long way from the lens or move the lens. Uh, I don't think that's going to work. I think what I'm going to have to do is pull the camera back. So I'll stick with my first opinion there. I'm to some extent making this up as I go along not actually tried to do this yet but uh, having done many similar things I think I can figure it out so that's given me my terrains all in a line so I'm just gonna get this right so they're just going to the end 
so just repositioning my camera slightly looking through this lens and then we'll consider move to the right or left I don't know oh let's say that'll do okay changing the document setup now to get my uh, 24 to 3 aspect ratio and I'll make it to just fit in horizontally so you can see it is a real letterbox and I also want a bit more sky than this so I'm going to modify the camera properties and pan H I'm going to take it up uh, 50 pixels so that's essentially going to drop the horizon 50 pixels in this render no not pan H uh, pan V I'm thinking vertically here and because this sometimes forgets the setting uh, what I shall do is uh, keyframe that camera setting so it doesn't forget and it pops back into place so hopefully that'll solve that problem so you can see now uh, the haze is making these look a bit too distant so I'm just going to get rid of the haze for a second and have a look how this looks depends how, how sharp you want these you can you can adjust it so you have a lot less haze if you want the haze to interact but not be too strong probably have to go into the sky lab to do that in this particular sky so if I do a rendering scene here there we go and uh, then I could drop the haze it's being a bit unresponsive because of the uh, terrains that's all and running other software in the background as well so I've dropped drop the haze down a bit to see how that looks so there's a bit of interaction there between that and the, the haze so I just let this render you can choose any material for the for the ground you want it to it's just as an example for getting the perspective right on such a long narrow render so it's not taking very long to render but uh, if it had to be rendered much larger then you'd have to watch my uh, videos about rendering very large scenes if you didn't know how to do that so file save as uh, hills one okay now the next thing I need to do is create a mask from this because of the presence of the lens in front of the camera I can't do that just by using the masking options in Bryce what I'll have to do as I'll turn the atmosphere off and set it to fully black then I'll get these things in my scene that are in front of the camera these things modify the material for these and change that to default gray give it full ambient ambient white output switch to the main view make sure I've got the global ambient color set to white so I can have white and I can create a mask that way and then just save that uh, save as uh, hills uh, mask right the reason I'm doing the mask is I want a different sky than the one that appeared behind the hills because the one that was appearing behind the hills was a bit boring so I'll just load in my uh, previous scene with the hills in and I'm just gonna get a sky for this now so I'll get rid of the hills switch back to this view and get rid of the lens so I don't need that now and you can see I've got the HDRI backdrop that uh, is in this view but I'm it's all looking distorted. I don't need haze for this. I'm just going to switch to 360 degree panoramic projection for this. And then I'm going to use the option on the on the camera to drop the horizon again so I can drop these behind the hills. So I'll use pan v 100 now. So I've shifted it 100 pixels for this particular render resolution. You'd have to choose an appropriate size for whatever you were rendering at. I'll keyframe that and then just render that as my backdrop. I'm going to file save as this can be hills too and then I'll launch paint shop pro and then I can composite these things together so there I've got my hills backdrop there I've got my hills and there I've got my mask so with these components if I go uh, control C and control L there and then a uh, new mask layer and from image I can select my mask go OK and as inevitably the case I always get my mask the wrong way round and so I'll do control Z go that back and then I just need to new mask layer from image and then not invert the mask data and select the appropriate mask and where you have oops that's gone behind there what you have now is the scene with one sky that's seamless and the hills now the only other issue you've got with this is that I didn't get the haze set right for the hills and the sky um, probably could have done with some haze in that sky so it blends with the terrains there so it look a bit out of place or re-render the terrains 
with less haze. So that will only take a moment. I'll just launch the image with the hills in. And we'll see if we can sort this out. So I could, when it's loaded, turn the haze off and render without the haze. Um, or I could render the sky with haze. So there we go. I think I probably need a bit more than that to make it blend. So there's the sky with haze. So render that one and render the other one. Change, save them as different file names, and then I can try the various combinations out. So that's just rendering that. We'll call this one file, save as hills 3. That's rendered out file, save as. Well, hills 2 already exist, so let's make this 4. And we'll look at the different combinations that we might get now. So um, I just need to find those files. There's the one with haze, and there's one without haze. So um, there we go. If I select this and the background and control L, that blends those in with haze and without the haze, control C and go on here, take the top group. I could probably put it in there and do control L and have another layer. So there's without haze. So depending what combination of things I want, I can switch those on or off and try and decide which I think looks best. So there you go, that's the hills without the haze. So that, I suggest, is a possible solution to getting this very long panoramic uh, view of hills without it being a 360 degree panoramic projection. But do the sky as a 60 de uh, 360 degree um, panoramic projection. And in that case, you'll only have one sun in the sky and you'll have a continuous sky and you can just use masking to join the two things together. So there you go. I hope that's helpful, interesting and uh, something that you might try in uh, Bryce 7.1 Pro.